Welcome back everyone to the Hello World guys, this is another episode of the Android game development series and in this video we are going to learn about transformation matrices and coordinate systems. So currently we are specifying our vertices in normalized device coordinates but instead we are going to specify them in some other coordinate system and then we are going to go through a bunch of intermediate steps to convert those into other coordinate systems and this is going to be achieved by multiplying them with different matrices. So the first one is the local space which is what we'll specify our vertices in and this is basically the space in which the center of the object will be considered as the origin and all of the coordinates or the vertices will be specified as local to that object. The second is the world space which is basically going to be the global space of our uh, or the global coordinate system of our scene and uh, the vertices that we have specified in the local space will be multiplied by a matrix called the model matrix which might uh, you know translate those vertices move them somewhere else rotate them scale them and then the result will be the vertices relative to the global uh, scene. The result that we get from that will be multiplied by the view matrix which will convert them from the global space uh, which is relative to the whole world and convert it to a space known as the camera space or the view space which is the space uh, or the coordinate system which is going to be relative to the camera or wherever we are looking from. So basically this view matrix will represent where the camera might be positioned and how it might be oriented. Finally, we will multiply our resulting coordinates with the projection matrix which will convert them into the clip space or the normalized device coordinates and once we get that we can then give the result directly to OpenGL and anything that is not in the negative 1 to 1 range will be clipped or this basically means that it won't be shown on the screen and anything that is within that range will be shown on the screen and that is pretty much all we need to do to uh, get the transformation working correctly. Now as far as the mathematics is concerned I won't be going into too much detail detail about how to construct these matrices, we'll be using a library called GLM to do most of the math for us. So the first thing I've gone ahead and done is that I have gone ahead and added GLM to our project and there are different ways in which you could do that but the easiest one is to just go ahead and download it from the GitHub repository. I'll have a link to that in the description. So just uh, uh, download the latest version whatever the latest release is available and uh, once you download that you can extract it and then you can copy the GLM folder into your project. So once you copy it in the project CPP direct uh, directory uh, you should see it appear inside of the directory and then what you can do is you can go under the CMake list and in here we can add another command which is called add subdirectory and with that we can add uh, the GLM directory that we've got here we can add that subdirectory after we are done with that in the target link libraries we can add GLM here and that should pretty much just be all we need to do and we are now good to go using GLM so here we can just uh, include GLM so I'm going to just include the uh, glm slash glm dot hpp header and uh, now we can go ahead and start using this our matrix multiplications are going to happen in the shader so we need to use uniforms to pass the matrices to the shader and we are going to define a uniform mat 4 because all of our transformation will be 4 by 4 matrices and this will be the projection matrix and we'll add the other matrices later currently we only have the projection and then we are going to multiply basically our vec4 by that matrix uh, vector remember is represented by a column matrix so we can just multiply it by 4 by 4 matrix and now we need to actually pass this um, matrix to the shader somehow and to do that we can use this GL uniform and you can see here we are getting the uniform location and using it directly but uh, we uh, projection matrix is something we want to change each frame and some other matrices are going to be changed each frame too so we are going to actually store the location in a, our class as a variable so that we don't have to use GL get uniform location again and again because that would be somewhat inefficient and in here we'll just use our projection location and we'll use GL get uniform location to set it to the correct value. And uh, once we have got that set to the correct value, we can now in you inside of our do frame we can use this to set the correct uniform. So after our GL use program, we can go here and we can use the GL uniform and we can use the GL uniform. Uh, class of commands and we are going to use a GL uniform matrix for FV to provide the matrix to our uh, shader and the first argument is of course going to be the location which we stored in our projection location variable and then the next argument is going to be the uh, count and that's going to be just one and then we're going to pass GL false because we don't want to transpose it you want to transpose if your matrix was stored in different order but we are good to go and uh, then for the last value for the actual matrix we are going to use the GLM mat for type 
like uh, declare a projection matrix and uh, we are going to use the glm value pointer function to get the a pointer to basically the data of this projection matrix and this function is not by default uh, you know included in glm slash glm dot hpp so we'll need to go up here and we'll need to include another header and this is going to be the glm slash gt slash, uh, slash type pointer dot h header type ptr dot hpp and once we include that header we are um, we can use this matrix and this is actually uh, a gl int i made it a glu int we can change that and now we can use and we can basically construct our projection matrix for the projection matrix, we basically got either an orthographic projection or a perspective projection. Since we are in 2D, we don't want things to get uh, uh, smaller the farther they are from the camera. So we are going to use an orthographic projection. For that, we can just use the glm ortho function. And this function is going to take in a left to right, a bottom and a top value. And what I have specified currently is just the normalized device coordinate. So nothing will change. To change something, we are going to calculate the inverse of the aspect ratio of the screen, which is the height divided by the width and we should not forget to cast it to a float and once we get that value we are going to leave the left and right at negative 1 and 1 respectively but for the bottom we are going to set it to the uh, negative of not width actually the negative of an inverse aspect and then for the top we can just set it to inverse aspect now this will make it so that our screen will not actually be warped anymore we will get a scare as an actual scare so now you can see we get a white scare in the center of the screen and it's not a stretched rectangle anymore now we are going to skip the view matrix because uh, our camera is stationary we don't need a view matrix uh, really and we can go ahead and create a uniform uh, we can directly go to the model matrix so i'm going to declare a uniform mat for model here and then we can use this model matrix and instead of multiplying uh, you know first by model and then by projection we can just multiply these directly and the order of this does matter so projection needs to come before model and here we're going to go ahead and define some the model location variable and then we can go down here and we can specify model location is equal to GL get uniform location program and then we can give it the model as the name and then we can go to where we are specifying our uh, GL uniform matrix and we can basically just copy this and we can now specify our model here as well so we can give the model matrix here and then we can give the model location here now I'm gonna go ahead and define a GLM mat for called model and we're going to set it to the identity matrix by giving one in the initializer which means it does nothing no transformation and we can do different kinds of trans uh, translations on this we're going to do a rotation for the input matrix that the rotation matrix will be multiplied with we will just pass our model and um, then we can give it an angle in radian so we are going to give it an angle of GLM quarter pi we quarter pi is basically like 45 degrees angle and then we can give it the axis that we want to rotate around and in 2d this is almost always going to be the z-axis so we are going to pass that and once we get, give this get this matrix this is going to cause our cube to basically be rotated 45 degrees and as you can see now we get a rotated cube and uh, this is all pretty awesome one interesting thing that we can do with this is that we can declare a static float here that will retain its value called angle and we are going to set it to zero by default and then each uh, iteration of this do frame we can just add a very small value to this angle uh, like 0.001f this is probably too small we are going to change this to 0.001f and then I can instead of saying glm quarter pi here we can just pass this angle here directly and this will should cause our uh, scare to rotate over time so if I go here you can see that uh, we get a very slow rotating cube that's probably a little too slow I'm going to increase the speed a bit and now you can see we get our uh, a little faster rotating scare here and as you can see this looks pretty cool anyways guys this is going to be pretty much it for this video I'll see you in the next one make sure to like and subscribe and share this video with other people as well and bye